Jake Paul versus Ben Askren is a very strange fight. You got a YouTube celebrity versus a retired MMA fighter preparing to fight each other in a boxing ring where they're going to test all their skills in this one aspect of their life that they're both not really experienced in. Jake Paul has somewhere around two to three years of training in boxing, whereas Ben Askren, it's varied. He's been training boxing for the sport of mixed martial arts, which is very different than training boxing for the sport of boxing, but he's been doing that for a very long time but specifically for this fight he's only been training for several months jake paul's gotten through a few fights where he has looked pretty good especially in this last one against nate robinson whereas ben Askren never really strikes not even in mma he rarely ever struck if you want to see a fight where ben Askren threw out some punches and you can kind of gauge a striking technique it was his very last fight in mma against damian maya and let's just say it didn't look that pretty ben Askren doesn't punch that well he's not super athletic he's not super flexible he's not very fast he's not very powerful as he says he has probably some of the slowest twitch muscle fibers you'll ever see in someone but due to that he's never going to gas out even in a boxing fight that he's never been a part of so even though ben's punching form is pretty ugly sometimes with a little bit more effort the ugly can score the knockout in Ben's case, it's not going to come early. Ben's victory is going to come out later in the fight as Jake Paul starts to get tired. And with the possibility that Ben Askren doesn't go away because he does have a really good chin, it's been tested against some of the best fighters in the world with 4-ounce gloves, not 10-ounce gloves that they have in boxing. I mean, one of the scariest guys on the planet, the boogeyman of the welterweight division, Robbie Lawler himself, slammed Ben Askren on his head, pounded him into oblivion, and Askren still found a way to get back up, press Robbie Lawler, and try to finish him in the very first round. It's going to be interesting to see how Jake Paul handles that kind of adversity that he's never experienced before. Yes, Jake Paul is a better puncher. There's no disputing that. He hits harder. He's more powerful. He's more explosive. He's more athletic. He's more flexible with his body. He has better control with his body, better mechanics, and he has better fundamental technique. But boxing is not all about throwing punches. There's a bigger mental battle that happens in boxing, in all combat sports, than there is physical. It doesn't matter what combat sport, boxing, Muay Thai, karate, MMA, wrestling, whatever it is, they're all combat sports. They all give you a level of combat experience. You're putting yourself up against a monster, a trained fighter, a trained killer in a sense, in one of the scariest things in the world to do. You put yourself in the darkest places when you're up against an opponent like that, testing your mind body and spirit this is something that jake paul has never had to do before this is something that you can only learn through experience and only be sure you can handle it through experiencing it we don't know if jake paul can do that in fact there are accounts of people who have trained with him for an example marcus perez who's a professional mma fighter he came in there with alexandre pantoja who's one of the best fighters in the world and he said that jake paul's not a fighter he's an adventurous type who's trying a certain thing but he's not a fighter at heart Perez sparred with Jake Paul, who's around the same size, and he punished Jake Paul, apparently. He was going to the body, he made him tired. Jake Paul did not show that fighting spirit that long veterans of the game have, which is a very bad look going to a fight with Ben Askren. Because if the fight goes past the fifth round, I would say, Jake Paul's probably done in that fight. The mental battle that Jake Paul is going to have to handle in this one is probably not going to go that well. Whereas for Ben Askren, He's been there and done that, not only in mixed martial arts, but also in his long career of wrestling where he went from high school all the way to the Olympics. There's no questioning Ben Askren's mental toughness. It's all on Jake Paul. How does he deal with the mental battle? Because you could be taught how to punch. You could be taught how to move your head a certain way. You get taught the techniques of boxing. Those are the aspects that Jake Paul is going to have an advantage of. But where he's not going to have an advantage of and he's going to be lacking in this one is what they cannot teach you. It's only what you can learn through experience. When it comes to your confidence, when it comes to your composure in real life competition, in a real life fight, when it comes to getting hit and coming back from it, showing your heart, being confident out there. One of the hardest things for inexperienced boxers to learn is how to deal with aggression and pressure. How to stay composed when the opponent is constantly in your face, no matter what you do. Lack of composure against pressure causes that boxer to amplify their energy expansion. They will get tired so much more when they lose composure because of unmanaged stress levels. They become so stressed out in the fight, they're so tense. You see points where they get wide-eyed and they start swinging huge punches to get the opponent away from them by either hitting them back away or trying to knock them out right there and then. What happens when Ben Askren's in his face? He's punching him, pulling him, pushing him, smothering him with pressure. And Jake Paul starts swinging these huge haymakers trying to get Ben Askren out of there. Or better said, trying to get himself out of there. How is Jake Paul going to last in that sort of fight? Again, the stress levels are only going to be managed 
through experience. No one can effectively teach you how to do that. The experience of fighting for such a long time is going to give Ben Askren that advantage. It's something that Jake Paul cannot be taught. He needs to go through these kind of fights with real fighters in order to experience that. He's not going to get that from Nate Robinson. He's not going to get that from some of the other guys he has fought. When he goes up against someone like Ben Askren, who's not going to go away, who's going to look tremendously confident, never going to lose composure, and has the built-in, hardwired fighting instincts that Ben Askren has developed, it's going to prove a tough fight for Jake Paul. When you talk about killer instinct, when to go in for the knockout, instinctively moving your head away from punches, the reflexes you develop from fighting. Even though Ben Askren doesn't have the best form, even though he's not the best striker, he has developed these instincts and reflexes fighting at the highest level of MMA. Ultimately, when he starts hitting Ben Askren early, starts landing his big bombs, and Ben Askren is taking them and he's moving forward still. And he keeps pressing Jake, he keeps moving forward, he keeps smothering him, and he keeps clamping onto him, punching him in the face, returning shots. And now the second, third, and fourth rounds have passed. How is Jake Paul going to handle this adversity? He hit the guy with everything he has, and he just keeps coming at him. Does not lose composure, does not lose a step. How is Jake Paul going to react to that? Now, Jake Paul may be better than we expect. He may deal with these things very well. There's a possibility he doesn't lose composure, and he fights intelligently. But I will tell you, by seeing it all the time in the gym, and experiencing it myself, Jake Paul is not going to react that well. It always happens with these amateur fighters, with these inexperienced fighters. When they land everything they can on a veteran, and the veteran does not go away, keeps coming at them, breaks them down, going to the body, push them up against the ropes, smothering them with pressure and volume, they always break down. It's a necessary experience, it's a necessary punishment that these young guys need to get through in order to grow. Jake Paul has yet to go through that. Especially if you have a bunch of yes men around you. Especially when you're in a gym where everybody's telling you how good of a boxer you are. And you're knocking out sparring partners that you got from the street. You create a false confidence about your skills that you can knock out anybody in the world. And if you go into a fight with Ben Askren and you're landing the same punches on him that you did sparking out the guys in sparring, but Ben Askren doesn't go away, it's going to put Jake Paul in a very dark place in the fight. He's most likely going to start questioning himself in the corner. He's gonna eventually have that look in his eye like he's drowning in deep waters. And that's the place where Ben Askren can absolutely win with a TKO or a knockout. Most knockouts do not happen by just powerful punches on a fresh opponent. Usually knockouts happen when the opponent is gassed out and they cannot embrace for the punch. So that is the more important part of this fight. It's more important than the technique. It's more important than the punches and how powerful one guy looks and how slow one guy looks. The mental battle of every fight is way more important than the physical. And it's actually amplified. The importance is magnified the lower the competition level is. Because we're used to watching pro boxers fight each other, right? They're both tested mentally and physically. When you have amateur fighters, at least one of them is not going to be mentally tested. They're going to have that first phase of a weakness. But with that, let's talk about the techniques. Let's talk about what we see from each fighter. On Jake Paul's end, his punches are pretty good. I mean, they're pretty nice in form, especially on a bag and especially when he's hitting mitts. They're a lot sloppier in an actual fight, as you saw in the Nate Robinson fight. Look at the difference between the Nate Robinson fight and how he was hitting mitts. It's obviously going to be different for every single fighter, but at least professional fighters are able to mimic what they do on the pads and do the same thing in an actual fight. For Jake Paul, there's a massive difference. The punches are a lot straighter, a lot more down the pipe, a lot more precise when he's hitting mitts. His form is a lot nicer, it's clean. But then when he gets in a fight with Nate Robinson, you see overhands and looping left hooks. He keeps ducking his head. He's moving back in straight lines. Where's the lateral movement? Backing up in straight lines makes it easier for Ben to pressure him to the ropes. It's a lot sloppier of work from Jake Paul. It becomes a lot more obvious. And even though his punches do land with a lot of power, he commits a lot into those. The punches can be seen coming pretty easily. Now, why does he generate so much power if he is a bit sloppy? Well, it's actually his feet that are the most impressive part of his game. His footwork, his ability to put himself in placements, in positions to deliver power is actually pretty impressive for someone with his experience. It just shows how naturally athletic Jake Paul is. And this is why he was able to generate so much power when he was moving away from Nate Robinson's aggression with those overhands and land devastatingly. It's his feet, not his arms, and not his upper body. But then again, he does swing very wildly. He swings looping punches that could be easily seen coming. And whenever he does this, whenever he sees the opponent press him a bit, he likes to duck his head, take his eyes off his opponent, look straight at the ground, and throw some looping punch. Whenever I see him do this, tells me he's not going to deal well with someone who paces themselves in front of him. 
who was able to stay composed and wait for those winging punches to come out. And not only that, there was one moment in the Nate Robinson fight about 1 minute and 36 seconds of the first round where Robinson actually threw a looping left hook from his hip, huge telegraph in the hook, and Jake Paul's reflexes were not too great in this moment. He actually went to slip on the outside of the left hand which means he's moving his head to the right on an orthodox's left hand. If Nate Robinson had any sort of distance management, if he ever trained before and he was a little bit closer with his left hook, he would have caught Jake Paul cleanly. That moment right there tells me he still does not have the reflexes necessary to really slip these kind of punches. And we look at Ben Askren. Now, Ben Askren, of course, is extremely sloppy with everything he does. He doesn't have the greatest head movement. He doesn't have the greatest punches. He's not super powerful. And he likes to dart out with those right hands all the time, never really measuring for jabs much, and just looking to touch the opponent in order to clinch up with them. This is what you saw in MMA for the most part. Then again, his whole game revolved around trying to grab onto you and take you to the ground. But that same strategy can also work against Jake Paul. He can't take Jake Paul to the ground, but grabbing onto him, getting at Jake Paul and grabbing him and put him into a clinch is the path for Askren's victory. This could be seen as a weakness against pro boxers, but it'll be a key path to victory for him against an inexperienced boxer with bad cardio. And yes, Jake Paul does not have the best cardio. If you look at the previous fights before Nate Robinson, the guy does gas out pretty quickly. Again, like I talked about before, especially against someone who's going to stay in his face, punching him, grabbing onto him, pulling him, pushing him. Jake Paul's going to be loading on every single punch he throws and trying to get this guy away from him. The cardio is not going to be there for the entire duration of the fight. The reason why the clinch is going to be his path to victory is for one, he's going to be stronger than Jake Paul in the clinch. Number two, he's more experienced in that area. He's going to be able to manipulate Jake Paul's body in the clinch. And thirdly, Ben knows how to distribute his weight, feeling very heavy for Jake Paul, using many different techniques that Jake Paul does not understand. And ultimately, trying to be as dirty as possible. Yank down the head, get a single collar, dig in underhooks and throw punches at him, do a bunch of different stuff in the clinch that's going to roughen up Jake Paul, even if it bends the rules a little bit. And from the clinch, Ben Askren can keep staying in his face, in his reach, and keep popping out with some shots, using his fighting reflexes of fighting guys who have four ounce gloves to dodge the punches in time. As you can see him fighting Damian Maya, as you can see in one championship, his reflexes, his reactions to punches are a lot better than Jake Paul's. And he's doing it against guys with four ounce gloves, which again are a lot harder to see coming. Pairing punches, sliding away from them, slipping on the outside of them effectively. This is something I just showed evidently that Jake Paul can't even do. Again, it comes with a level of experience. Reacting like this ain't much in the general grand scheme of things, but it's something that Jake Paul has never had to deal with before. Someone actually trying to slip his punches. No one's ever really tried to do that effectively. Nate Robinson, for an example, was literally running at him head first. A running target. Another thing that Ben Askren likes to do a lot is duck his head. It comes from his wrestling days. It's part of his instincts. Whenever he sees a punch coming at him, which are usually right overhands and left hooks from Jake Paul, which come out instinctively as he just tries to get you away from him, Ben Askren is going to duck under those punches. He has a really quick ability to duck his head. It's a reason why he did get knocked out by Hori Mazda with a knee, but against overhands and looping punches, it's going to be extremely effective, and it's a way for Ben Askren to land the uppercut on his way up, and then get into a clinch immediately, because again, every time Ben Askren does something, he likes to get into the clinch immediately afterward, whether it be a combination or just some punch. He likes to always clinch up with you, but Ben Askren's really going to have to watch out for the uppercuts. But there is something pretty bad from Ben Askren. It's pretty much a Newton's first law of motion states. An object in motion stays in motion with the same speed and in the same direction unless acted upon by an unbalanced force. This is true with Ben Askren as well. When he's moving forward, he just keeps moving until he crashes into you, and he moves in one direction at one speed until you intercept him or counter him. This was shown in every single fight of his, especially in the Damian Maya fight where most of the fight was striking, which cannot be said for other Ben Askren fights. He moves forward, arms extended, and Damian Maya is able to back step away from him and catch him with the left hand. The unbalanced force that knocked Ben Askren off another direction was Damian Maya's left hand. And actually, a few of those sequences was exactly how Jake Paul knocked out Nate Robinson. There were a few times where Damian Maya just simply backstepped just slightly and landed the same exact sort of punch from his left hand though that caught Ben Askren coming in. Jake Paul did the same thing when Nate Robinson was coming in. This can be a bit scary because Ben Askren does not have the best head movement in general and he's going to be looking to pressure Jake Paul from bell to bell. And this is what tells you that Ben Askren is going to get hit early as he has no deviation from his pressure. He does not move in any sort of direction besides forward. When he's in motion, he stays in motion. 
and this has gotten intercepted plenty of times. But this lack of head movement is really only evident when Ben Askren is moving forward in this kind of manner. When he's actually pacing himself without looking for heavy offense, he has shown decent eyes to see punches fly out at him. Again, like I talk about the slipping ability of his that he's just developed through fighting high level fighters. Combine this with the fact that he has fought against 4 ounce gloves, which are going to be a lot harder to see than big boxing gloves. His reactions, his reflexes against Jake Paul's punches are going to be a lot better on display than ever before. So ultimately, these are the reasons why Ben Askren should win against Jake Paul. There are chances for Jake Paul to defeat Ben Askren as well. But my official prediction for the fight is going to come out tomorrow. So I hope you guys enjoyed the breakdown. If you did, make sure to thumbs up, drop my comment, make sure to subscribe, and I'll see you guys in the prediction video.